So I'm here at the Ark Gallery in Winchester for a really wonderful and to me unexpected, um, extraordinarily unexpected treat, which is an absolutely fantastic exhibition about Constable, John Constable, who's one of my favourite painters, one of the painters whom I feel is most deeply misunderstood, but not here, because here uh, at the Ark, as I say, in Winchester, they put together a show with the help of the V&A in particular, but also the Tate. Um, they've borrowed some fantastic things to create this small, highly focused exploration of the artist as an expressive painter, dare I say, an expressionist painter. The show opens with this beautiful little portrait, um, not a constable painting, but a painting by C.R. Leslie. Uh, and I always think, you know, C.R. Leslie loved John Constable. He wrote um, the first serious um, book of memoirs. He edited Constable's writings. They were very, very close. Um, and I always think that in this depiction, he does look a bit like a bank manager. And that fact that he looks a bit like a bank manager, I think, is really one of the things that has, has hindered appreciation of Constable. Because I genuinely believe that Constable is, you know, the first true expressionist painter, um, not just in Britain, but in Europe. The mo one of the most radical artists of the 19th century. Not in any way a kind of chocolate boxy um, artist who paints... Uh, you know, the Haywain and things like that and beautiful scenes of Suffolk that we will always put on, you know, on calendars and so on. No, no, no. Constable is a radical, an artist whose work is rooted in his own affections. And to make that point, you know, from the very start of the show, they've got this beautiful little drawing of one of Constable's um, children. It's, it's, a, it's a sketch of a baby that he made in 1819. Um, and, and, and again, it, it's not sentimental. He's got that sense of a baby as a vital, uh, sort of like a miracle, a miracle of life that's just happened. There is this baby. And to Constable and his wife Maria, it's all the more of a miracle because their union had been so blocked um, it had been so difficult for them to get married. Constable courted her for years and years and years, but because he was a penniless artist with no prospects, or so her grandfather thought she was from money, he wasn't allowed anywhere near her. So they courted at a distance. They held each other in each other's hearts at a distance, but they were only able to marry very late. So when the baby started arriving, Constable is overjoyed. So that, that's, that's that. This is um, an image that shows you where he came from. You know, he came from, he studied at the Royal Academy and he was, was, was educated in the way that a salon artist of that period was meant to be educated, an academic artist, I should have said. Namely, you study the male nude. And the idea is that you will eventually become a painter of histories, a painter of grand narrative subjects. Constable didn't do that. He was a rebel from the start. He said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I don't think the highest form of art is history painting. I won't even dress up my landscape paintings as history paintings. He, from the very beginning, decided that he was going to paint, as he put it, my own places, the places of my childhood. Um, in particular, East Bergholt, Suffolk, that's where he was born. Um, and here you've got this beautiful little double drawing of the house in which he was brought up. Um, his father was quite a wealthy mill owner, so Constable didn't come from nowhere, but his prospects were, were bad. That's why um, Maria, his future wife's grandfather, wouldn't let him near her. Um, so he's living in this rather grand house, and you get the sense from these, these two pictures, you know, one of them's a moonlight and one of them's a daylight, that he's living a kind of double life, and they, he, he was. And that's the wonderful thing about drawings like that, is that they're profoundly autobiographical. And what this one shows us is that, yes, Constable by day, and there's Constable by night. And what's he doing by night? He's prowling the country lanes. He's walking over to Maria's house, which is just over the fields. And he's staring through the windows, hoping that she's going to bless him with a glance or a gaze. They're exchanging letters. It's all fantastically romantic and very, very blocked, as I say. Um, 
And, and it's one of the reasons why he becomes such an amazing landscape painter. I think of him as being the equivalent in, in painting to Wordsworth in poetry. Wordsworth says, um, what is an epic? In the days of Milton, an epic was a, was a poem that told the story of paradise lost. You know, a great, great biblical subject, grand, vast, huge, cosmic. And, Co and, and Wordsworth changes that and he says, no, I'm going to write a poem, an epic poem, that's going to be about myself as a child. And it's going to be about my for the formation of my mind through my experience of landscape. That's what the prelude is. And that's exactly what Constable's early paintings and drawings are. And in fact, his whole career as an artist, it's exactly what all of it is. It's a reflection on his own personal growth, his own development, his own psychology, his own loves, disappointments, hopes and fears, all as expressed through landscape. So he's not just a painter of landscape, he's a painter of his own feelings before landscape, if that makes sense, just as Wordsworth is a poet of his own feelings. And that's what makes Constable so essentially radical. You know, do come and explore this exhibition. It's not huge, but it's really rich. And some of the things in it, you know, they're worth the price of admission, you know, just on their own. Really fantastic show.